Hi, good morning. Welcome again for another week of yoga. And today we're going to possibly need something to sit on for some forward bending. So blank or a cushion. Maybe uh, a block. We'll be doing a little bit of balance, standing balance, reaching for the floor, maybe a strap. So anything you're not comfortable doing, please don't do. Listen to your body and um, enjoy what you do enjoy doing. So we'll start by lying down and getting comfortable on the floor. So nice long back, shoulders released. And if you can, palms facing upwards. You can either have the legs straight or the knees bent, whatever you find the most comfortable. Observing how the back connects with the floor. So feeling the back of the head and noticing if the head feels straight or if there's a slight angle whether the chin feels like it's jutting towards the ceiling. I'm just trying to sort of get a, a neutral position of the head. Relax into the back of the neck muscles and then feel where the back of the shoulders connect with the ground. Is it the same on the right side to the left side? And if it isn't, it doesn't matter. It's just observation. You don't have to change anything. And as you breathe, feel that connection of the back ribs and the floor. Notice how on the exhale, we gain a little more connection to the ground. Notice where the back connects with the ground. So if you have the legs straight, you'll have a little bit more space in the lower back. If you have the knees bent, it will be flatter. Start to deepen the breath. In through the nose, out through the nose. Letting the belly expand on that inhale. So no tension in the belly when we breathe in and as we exhale, let it soften, let it sink to the floor. And encouraging the diaphragm to move deeper down towards the base. And then from here, let's take the hands up. So we'll keep the elbows connected with the floor. We'll just have the hands pointing up towards the sky and we'll bend the knees taking the feet off and we'll just rotate into the ankles into the wrists and then we'll go the other direction and then can you get the right side going in one direction and the left side going in the other direction which feels a little weird and then switch it around all right and then maybe get the hands going in one direction now and then try getting the feet to go in the other direction. This one I struggle with. I always end up going the same way. All right, and let's come back down. Okay, so from here, I'll take the right knee in towards the chest and either holding onto the shin or behind the back of the thigh, whether it's comfortable, just a nice little squeeze. We're gonna take that left leg up into the air, take a nice deep breath in here. And exhale, just slowly lower it down, but not touching the floor, just extending it away. Just hovering just off the ground. We keep squeezing the right leg in. Now, if you want a little bit more core strength, keep the right knee tucked in, but let go of the hands and just extend those towards your left foot. And if you again might have a little extra, take a deep breath in. And on the exhale, lift the head and the shoulders just off the floor. So adding some core strength. And relax. Bring the right leg down. 
and soften. Okay, so we'll start with the right knee. Then we're going to take the left knee in towards the chest, either holding onto the shin or behind the leg there. Nice deep squeeze. And then we'll extend right leg up towards the sky. And then begin to slowly lower that leg, but hovering it just off the ground. Really reaching out through the heel. And then perhaps keeping the left knee tucked in and taking the hands now either side. So contracting through those hip flexors. And if you want that little bit extra on the next exhale, lifting head and shoulders just off the floor. Hovering. And relax. All the way down. We'll have both knees bent, feet out towards the edges of the mat. And then a loose, relaxed roll side to side with the knees. And then from here, knees into chest. Now we'll take the back for a nice little roll side to side. And then we'll come up to a seated position. And if you want, this is where you can sit up just on a low level cushion or a blanket, whatever's comfortable. And from here, we'll start with both legs out. So we're going to just do a little series from the Quantum Katana series. Um, this is great for the joints, basically. So we'll start by pointing and flexing the toes and the feet all as one, and then we'll rotate in and out. So little toes to floor and then big toes in towards each other. So we're just getting that whole hip rotation movement in the joint there. Progress. Okay, and we'll come back to center. So bending the right knee, and we're going to hold behind the back of the leg and take that foot off the floor. So it's just a simple straighten and bend for the knee joint. Up and down a few times. Then we'll do a little bit of a circle. So there's a bit of a circular movement in the joint here. And then we'll go the other way. Fabulous. Okay, a bit of a squeeze in. We'll take it in a little bit deep if you can. And then from here, we'll allow that knee to come out to the side, but we're actually going to lift and carry that foot across on top of the left thigh, if you can. So I've crossed my right leg over my left leg. And then from here, grabbing hold of the foot with my left hand and just circling around. So nice big circles. And then we'll go the other direction. Just going to circle that ankle joint around manually. And then we'll go the other direction. And then from here, we're stretching the top of the foot. So try and keep your ankle straight. And we want this stretch to run up the front of the shin there. So toes are down. And then we'll go back the other way. And now we want to stretch the bottom of the foot. So I'm actively pulling my toes back and flexing the foot as much as I can. So toes back towards the shin. And then releasing that, we'll lift the leg up a little bit and just take it for a nice gentle little rock. So this is for the hip joint. And you can support the knee with the right hand. And then we'll bring it across, down again, and gentle. So I'm just letting the weight of my arm rest here on this thigh. So I'm just encouraging the knee towards the floor. You can see mine's quite high off the floor, which means my hips are a little tight. Some people can get their knees all the way down to the ground from here. I'm gonna keep the spine nice and tall. All right, so we'll lift that up, take that back and extend it out. Changing sides, so we'll bend into the left knee and starting by holding behind the back of the thigh, 
and just nice, easy up and down movements. There we go. Circling around. And then we'll go the other direction. Nice. All right. And then from here, just a little squeeze. And then we'll take that leg across. And holding with the right hand, we'll now rotate a little bit more into that ankle joint. We'll go other direction. And then stretching the top of the foot. So I'm going to draw the toes down, but I'm not angling or sickling the ankle joint now. I'm keeping that straight so I get it going up the shin. And then we'll go back the other way. So flexing the foot and actively pulling all the toes back. So opening up plantar fascia. And then releasing that stretch, lifting it up, taking it for a nice, easy rock side to side. And then placing it across and just resting your arm, allowing a little bit of you know, gentle weight to go through and into that hip joint. And then easing off with that pressure. Let's just stand that leg out, loosen off a little bit. So now taking that into your forward bend, this is where if you like to you know, hold onto your toes and it's a bit tricky to reach, you can use a strap. Otherwise, don't have to have a strap. So I'm sitting just on the very edge of my support here, just to give myself a little bit more of a forward tilt with the pelvis. And we'll keep the left leg straight. We're going to bend that right knee. So I want a straight knee bend. And then we rotate it from the hip joint out to the side. You can place that foot anywhere from along the inside of your left leg right up into its own inner thigh if that reaches for you. And if you find that the knee joint or the hip joint needs a bit more support, you can always use a, a brick to support that leg as well. Okay, so from here, if you like the strap, let's place it around the left foot. We'll draw up nice and tall through the back there. Relax the shoulders back. And at this point, they should be level. So we're gonna try and keep that chest, that uh, shoulder, positioning as we begin to fold forward. So I don't sort of want to let my left shoulder lean forwards. I keep the body facing that front left foot and fold into where you're comfortable to go. Soft, even breath, soft gaze. I'm just looking to my toes as I breathe into the back. So it's a great opening for all of that lower back area. And you know, being mindful not to force. So I'm not pulling really hard on this strap. I'm, I'm trying to rest. I've got my elbows soft. And then on our next breath in, let's come up. Keep the legs as they are just for a moment. We'll do a nice little twist to the right. So bring the right hand around behind, left hand to the bent knee. And turning through the belly, through the ribs, stretch away through that left leg. And then breathing back out of that twist and straightening now into that right leg. And we'll change over. So straight knee bend first, then rotating from the hip to take that leg out to the side. If you like, place the strap around the right foot. Nice tall spine. And as you exhale, begin to fold wherever you're comfortable to end up with a soft face, soft breath. Easy gaze towards the toes if you can and shoulders are level. I like to send the breath into the back where I'm feeling that opening. You may feel it 
maybe in the hip joint, maybe in the straight leg. And then inhaling gently back out. And we'll take ourselves to the left side for a twist. So left hand behind, right hand to the bent knee and really extending away through the right leg. And breathing back to our center. All right, so crossing the legs now. So whatever your favorite cross is, I happen to have my right leg in front of my left leg. So whichever leg you prefer to have in front, uh, we're crossing about mid shin and we're going again for a forward bend. So this is working on both hips. We're just easing forwards. Really flexy people, you might be happy to put your head on the floor. Us not so flexy people will be a little higher and being mindful not to, you know, grit the teeth. Try not to create extra tension in yourself. Okay, let's walk it back in, lengthening back up. And then whatever you chose, we're now going to switch the other leg in front, which is probably our least preferred option, which is why we do it. And once more, nice tall spine breathing in and exhale, easing forwards wherever you're comfortable to go. Soft face. And then walking it back up. We'll take both legs out wide now. So as wide as you're, you're comfortable to extend them. Again, I'm sitting just on the very edge of my blanket here and we're doing a, an actually it's called chalasana or stirring the pot. So we imagine we have this huge pot in front of us and we're going to hold on to our stirrer with both hands. And we just start off with you know, little circles. I quite like to imagine I'm stirring a nice big pot of risotto because it needs a slow, gentle stir. And we start to make that pot a little bigger and reach it out more towards the toes. So nice big circles now. And if you want to add the breath, inhale as you come back and exhale as you come forwards. And then we'll change direction. So we're still with the big circles. Probably notice it's in the inner thighs, opening up into the back. We'll start to make that circle a little smaller, getting the spine more upright, moving from the hips, and then coming back into our center. All right, so maybe take the feet a little wider again if you've got that extra space. We'll move into a forward bend. So just walking the hands wherever they're comfortable to be supported. Again, if you need to be a little higher, you could stay with the brick. I keep my uh, legs active. So I've got my toes pulling back to my kneecaps and I'm lifting my kneecaps by firming up these quad muscles as I press the back of the legs to the floor and breathe. All right, walking it all back in and up. We'll soften the knees, bring them back in towards each other. And you may want to come off your support 
Let's just shimmy off that. And then bringing the hands behind, bending the knees and taking the knees for a loose little roll side to side. So we'll hold the knees over to the right. We're going to turn and look to the left. And we'll come back to center and go over to the left, look to the right. And then out and up. So let's come over onto hands and knees. And we'll move into hanging cat stretch. So hips will stay above the knees and we'll walk the hands forwards. If you want, you can use a brick to support the head. That's going to be nice on the shoulders. Or you can rest the head on the floor. And then walking the hands back in. And we'll roll ourselves all the way up to standing. So let's tuck the toes, bring the hands back towards the feet, knees are soft. And then rotating to the wrists as we bend the knees a little bit more, lift the head, lift the heart, and inhale. Let's come all the way up to stand. All right, so I've got a few standing poses today. And for this, initially we won't need any um, equipment on the mat, so just clear that off. We'll come into warrior two, so we're gonna turn our right foot out 90 degrees. Big step back with the left foot. Feet are in line for this one and we're facing the long end of our mat. So start to soften into the right knee, lengthen into the inner thigh. And on your next breath in, let's take both arms out. Try and find sort of that level. So it always helps to you know, have a good look. And then we'll settle the gaze down the right arm. Try and relax the shoulders, little softness in the elbow joints and drawing up through that back left leg. So lifting the kneecap, but pressing firmly down through the left foot. Think of lifting your left inner ankle a little bit more away from the floor. And then we'll bring both hands down and change sides. So rotating the feet, making sure we're still keeping them in line. Sinking down into that left knee, breathing up the arms, and then, you know, having a check is that are they the same height? More or less, we'll settle the gaze down our left arm as we hold. So that back right leg, nice and strong, kneecap lifting up and a little lift of the inner ankle away from the floor so that you should really feel the whole sole of the foot planted on the ground. Check there's not too much tension in the shoulders. And then we'll release the arms and coming back to our centre, we'll walk the feet in. So our next pose, we're going to move from a flying balance pose and we're going to take it all the way through to a standing forward bend with a leg up in the air. So if you know that reaching the floor with a straight leg is a little tricky, this is where a uh, support. It could be a chair, it could be a brick, um, just something to put your hand on to make it a little bit more accessible. So we'll start with the right foot forwards. And we're now facing the short end of the mat. We'll have a little softness in that front right knee. And then from here, let's take the arms out wide, open that chest. In fact, if we make it a cactus arm, the elbows bent there, 
Think of drawing the shoulder blades down the back towards the buttocks as the elbows come down a little bit. All right, from here we'll take the weight into the right hand and then sweeping the palms back and behind as we straighten the arms and lift the left leg off the floor. So we'll hold it in our balance. As we keep lifting that left leg, we fold a little deeper and you can start to release the hands either to the floor or onto your support with the brick. But I am trying to keep this right leg straight if possible. So we're just moving into a standing splits, more or less. So from here, we take a breath in, lengthen through the spine, and as we exhale, release the head to look towards the shin. Now, if you've got your hand on the support, you'll probably want that underneath the left hand or left hand on the floor. We'll take the right hand behind the right calf to draw ourselves in a little deeper, and we keep lifting the left leg. And breathe. There's a big stretch through that right leg. We'll start to ease back out. So take the left foot down, matching up with the right into a what, sort of a feet about hip width or a little wider if you like. Fold the arms, Uttanasana. Couple of breaths, let it all settle. And then we'll bend the knees a little deeper as we inhale and gently roll ourselves back up. All right, so let's change sides. We'll have left foot forwards. And we're starting off with our cactus arm position, if that's comfortable, moving the shoulder blades down the back of the body. Transfer the weight to the left foot. And then we'll release the hands back as we start to lift the right leg. And we keep lifting. Hold it here in the balance. And then going a little deeper, we'll let the hands come towards the floor or onto your supports. As we keep that right leg up in the air now, and we try and get this left leg straight if we can. Not locked, I don't wanna lock it backwards, but I do want it straight. So this time the right hand will either stay on the floor or using your support there. And the left hand will come behind the calf. So I'll take a breath in. And then as we exhale, folding a little deeper, taking that right leg maybe a little higher. See how it feels. Enjoy this strength and stretch happening in the left leg. All right, let's step forwards with the right foot. Uttanasana, fold the arms. Just allow yourself to hang, breathe. And then gently on the inhale, Rolling it all the way back up. And shake the legs out. That's a good little workout for the legs there. Okay, next posture is Trikonasana, triangle pose. So we will come back to our right foot turned out. Big step back with the left. Feet are again back to line. So we're once more facing the long end of the mat. This time we'll keep both legs straight. And if we place the left hand here on the, the left top of the pelvis, we're going to allow that to roll slightly forwards when we slide our right hand down the shin. From here, we want to lift and rotate the ribs towards the ceiling. So I'm gonna breathe and lift, turn and rotate. And if it's comfortable, you can reach up now with that top left arm into our Trikonasana. So again, I'm trying to keep this right leg straight. 
pressing down strong through both feet. Steady breath. And then to come back out, we'll actively push through the feet, reach through the top arm and release. Let's change sides. So the left foot turned out. So we'll place the right hand on top of the right hip pelvis there. Left hand, slide it down, let this hip roll slightly forwards as we come down. But we need space to inhale, turn and rotate the ribs. And then if it's comfortable, reaching up with that top arm, drawing up through these legs here. Steady breath, soft gaze. And then actively pressing down through this left leg, reaching all the way up and arms back down. We'll step it back in. Little shake off. So now we're going to take this into Ardha Chandrasana. So this is where it's really handy to be able to place the hand a little bit higher than the floor for a lot of us. If you're quite tall, you're going to want the brick on the high side uh, or use a chair, whatever is available. If you're a bit um, wobbly with the balance because this is a balance pose, then feel free to you know, do this against a wall or bookcase, whatever you've got handy. You can lean the whole body against it. So whatever support you've chosen, I want to be about a foot away from that. So you can see that I can fit a whole foot between my foot and my brick in front. This is to allow for my body length. And my little toe lines up at the front edge of the brick. So technically that brick's a little bit behind me. All right, so from this position, we'll come into our triangle pose. So a little bit differently, we're gonna breathe out the arms. Exhale, glide over, right hand towards the right shin. And then you can either leave the top arm up or you can rest it back here. It will be a little less distracting, but whatever works. We're going to bend the front knee, step in with the left foot, and then without looking, if possible, find your support, keep the gaze steady on one point, and transfer the weight into that right leg. Let's see if we can take the left leg up, get both legs straight, and keep breathing. Nice work. So I'm trying to lift my top leg up to be in line with the top hip. And then to come out, we want to be slow and graceful. We're going to bend the right knee, reach back with the left foot, and gently all the way back out. Okay, heart might be racing a little bit after that. So we'll do it one more time this side. It's usually easier the second time. So from here, same setup. Inhale out, exhale. Let's bend the knees, we come over and then step straight, whoop, straight into a Ardha Chandrasana. Present moon pose and lifting up if possible, and breathe. Okay, making our way up, bend the knee, coming back. Oh, awesome work, okay. Shake out, so a lot of work on that right leg, and we'll transfer over to the left side. So I've just got the brick in the left-hand corner there, and Remember, I don't want my foot too close to the support. Otherwise, I'm going to end up a little bit too crunched up with the upper body. So first up, we'll start with triangle pose. Inhale, gliding over, and just the shin. Option of leaving the top arm up or resting it here on the hip. And then from here, bend the front knee. Step in a little bit with the right foot. And then we feel where our support is, transfer the weight to that left leg, reaching up, standing out through the top arm and the top leg now. 
I'm trying to keep my gaze forwards rather than down to the floor. Because when I look down, I tend to collapse to the floor. So I want to lift and open up. All right, coming back out, bend the knee and come back out. <laughs> Trouble is when you're moving your gaze, it's very hard to keep your balance. That's why I resist looking down in the first place and try and keep my gaze always on that fixed point in front of me. So we have one more this side, and this time we'll go a little bit quicker into it. So I'm going to inhale out, exhale, bend the knees, we come over, stepping in at the same time and lifting up. Thinking about where we're going to take that gaze. Keep breathing. Keep lifting that top leg. Nice work. And then we'll soften the knee, come back out, and relax. Step it back in, shake it off, loosen up. Good work. All right. So, our next one, a little bit different. We're going back to facing the short side of the mat. And I'm going to put my brick here in the middle. We won't use it just yet, but uh, coming into a forward bend on one leg. So we've got the right foot forwards. And let's see if we can you know, ease this left hip forward. So I'm just trying to relax my right hip back, left hip forwards. A little bit of softness in the right knee. Just as if we're setting up for warrior one. But we're going to keep the right hand on the right hip. Take the left arm out in front and then reach forwards, placing the left hand on the support and lift the left leg up. So I'm from this position, try and get a sense of the hips being level. So I don't want to keep my left hip lifted. I'm trying to draw up through my outer right hip. And think of reaching out through the crown of the head and back through the left lifted toes. So just a little rotation to the right. And you may even notice the opening we start to get in that outer right thigh. Try and keep the hips level, keep the left leg lifted. All right, we're gonna look back to the floor. Then the front knees. Step back with the left leg, come back out. And we'll change sides. So left foot forwards, right foot back. Okay, from this position, easing forwards with the right hip, relaxing the left side back. Little softness in the left knee to start off with. Inhale out the right arm. Exhale, start to extend forwards. Place the hand down on your support. And let's take the right leg up and hold. So at this point, everything's facing the floor and I'm just trying to work at getting my hips level with each other. And then thinking about the length of the spine. So I don't want to be dropping my head and rounding into my back, extending through the crown of the head and back through the toes. And I keep drawing up this outer left thigh, left hip. And we'll add just a little rotation. So I'm turning just a little bit to my left as I start to get more opening happening here in my outer left thigh. All right, let's face the floor, soften the knees, step back down. And coming back out. So we're building up to a revolved um, crescent moon pose. So we're going to add a little bit more twist now. So let's just get a little bit more rotation in the upper body, taking the arms around. Nice work. We'll come back to center. And then right foot forwards. So it'll be left hand coming down to the support. So let's take that out. 
On the exhale, reaching down with the left hand, take the left leg up. Inhale, lift the head, lift the chest. Get a bit of height underneath the body. As we begin on the exhale, the turn to the right, rotating through the ribs, the chest. And if it feels okay, taking the top arm up, but if it doesn't, just keep it on the hip like I am here. I'm trying to get my right shoulder stepped over my left. And then we'll face the floor. We can step forwards to come out of this one and just roll it back up. And we'll change sides. So left foot will stay in front. Right foot is coming back. And then from here, taking the right arm out. Exhale, reaching out. Hand down. Take the right leg off. Find that levelness in the hips. Get a little bit more height through the chest, away from the floor. And then on your next exhale, start to turn to the left. And if it feels okay, you can take that top arm up. Keep lifting that back right leg. Keep breathing. And then we'll face the floor. Step forwards, come into Uttanasana again. So knees are soft. Fold the arms. Just allow the head to relax. Let it all settle down. And then from this position, release the hands to the floor. You might want to shift the brick off to the side. We'll do a little stretch out and downward dog. So walking it back, climbing the hands down. Have a nice deep breaths here into the belly. And then knees to floor. We'll come down into a child pose. So if you like to rest the head on the floor, you can, or on your hands. And then from this position, we'll make our way all the way to lie flat on the floor. So if you need to readjust your cameras, then feel free to do that. And we'll get comfortable on the ground here. All right, so working initially with snake pose. So with the parsana, we're going to have the arms down beside the body and forehead on the floor. We'll just work the upper back muscles to start off with. So I'm going to keep my feet relaxed on the ground, try and relax my legs. And then as you breathe in, lift the head, the chest, and the arms off the floor. We're just looking to the end of the mat as we work those upper back muscles, feet are relaxed, legs relaxed as much as you can. And then on the exhale, release back to the ground. If you like to turn your head to one side, feel free to do that. And you can also bring the arms up if you like to do that. So whatever's comfortable. So I'll add a little side bend to our snake pose. Still keeping the feet relaxed on the floor, but this time, bringing the arms up with the hands underneath the shoulders. We're not going to use the hands though. If you do need support for your back, you can keep the hands on the floor, but we're not pushing up very high. So let's breathe in, lift the head, lift the chest, and if possible, take the hands off the floor. Remember the feet are relaxed. On the exhale, moving to the right. So I'm opening up into my left side, 
As I squeeze into the right, we're going to keep breathing as we hold the squeeze. Next breath, let's come back to centre. Rest. And then let's set up for the left side. So hands back under shoulders. Relax the legs. Breathe in, lift the head, chest, and arms if you can. On our exhale, squeezing to the left and holding. So we keep breathing as we hold. Let's stretch and opening into the right side. And let's breathe back to centre. And once more, have a nice rest. So working now the other half, the arms are going to come down beside the body again. This time we want to keep the head towards the floor and we'll be lifting just a single leg off the ground. So from here, forehead stays on the floor. Mine will be lifted so that you can hear my voice. And as you breathe in, let's take the right leg up and back. So we're keeping the leg straight and we're just lifting from the thigh. So we're exercising those lower back muscles. We'll bring that right leg down. And then next breath in, let's take the left leg up. and bring that leg back down. So to make it a little bit easier, again, we're gonna put the hands underneath the thighs now. If you've got something bulky like bangles or heavy duty watches, you may wanna take those off because they'll dig in. But I'm just placing my hands underneath the body now, palms are facing up. And you'll probably find you'll get much bigger lift this time. So let's take the right leg up. You actively press the fingers down to the floor. We'll bring that leg back down. And then we'll go over to the left side, inhaling up. And back down. Now the thumb bit is trying to lift both legs off the floor. So you may want to link the thumbs underneath the body. If you find that this is um, not comfortable on your lower back, stay with the single left leg left, or just um, you know, take a little break, come into a child pose, give the back some space. If you're happy to try both legs, let's give it a go. So we're going to breathe in and see if we can lift both legs. And back down. Have a nice rest. We've got one more of those to go. So when you're ready, lifting up. And release. And release the arms out from underneath the body. Have a rest. Notice how the back feels. And if you did take something off, remember to put it back on. And then we'll take the hips just for a little rock side to side. Now, if you've got energy for one more back lift, we're going to put it all together, lifting the upper body and the lower legs at the same time into our full sapasana house. Snake. So we'll have the arms beside the body, not underneath. And when you're ready, inhale, lift the head, lift the chest, lift the arms and the legs. Now you can stay quite low level, keeping the spine long. And if you want to be gentle on your back, staying low is a great thing. Um, but if your back feels okay, you can certainly lift up a little bit higher if it feels good.
Just a couple of breaths here. And relax all the way down. Perhaps head off to one side. Big slow breaths in and even longer breath out. All right, we'll move back into our child pose again. So your choice of either knees hip width, or if you like, you can go a little wider with the toes touching and either arms extended forwards or head supported. Breathe into that lower back area, encourage the breath to create space into what we were just strengthening. All right, we're gonna roll it up and we'll come over to sit. The legs out. So again, if you want to have a little bit of um, support underneath the buttocks. You can sit back on the edge of your blanket or cushion, whatever you may have. And we're going back to our wide-legged posture. So if you do like the strap, again, you could bring your strap into play. So this time we'll add a little twist or rotation to our, our sort of side bend, if you like. Uh, we're actually going to the right side first. So if you do like to, you know, hold on to your foot or if that's not achievable, you can use a strap around the foot instead. But again, you don't have to have a strap. You can rest your hand on the floor as we go in. So from here, I'm actually rotating. I'm turning towards my left foot. And then I'll start to lean over the right leg. So you can place your elbow on the thigh or perhaps the inner knee. Um, you might be able to reach your toes or you can hold on to the strap or you could just rest the hand on the floor here. So all of those options are nice. So we're going to lift, turn the chest just like we do in our triangle pose. And if it's comfortable, lifting the left arm up. So it's a big opening all through the left side of the body. And we just ease into it. Whatever we're happy to get to. If you can reach your toes, awesome. You don't have to though. Just feel that beautiful opening in the left side, pressing down through the left leg. And we'll take our time coming up. So let's inhale up. Nice and easy, coming back to our centre. Noticing how that feels. And then we'll change with the strap if you're using the strap. So let's start with a little turn first to the right. And then we begin to lean over the left leg. You can walk your hand down the strap or hold on to your toes or rest the hand on the floor. So I'm trying to move my ribs a little more towards the ceiling. And then next breath in, we can take that right arm up and begin to extend it over, creating that space and opening in the right ribs. So we breathe it there. Pressing down through the right leg. And then next breath in, we'll ease our way back out. Coming back to the center. Noticing how that makes us feel, hopefully calm. Is what we're looking for. We'll bring the legs back in. Soles of the feet together. So 
into a bound angle pose. You can hold the toes or the ankles or the shins. And as we press the heels and edges of the feet together, just encouraging the knees out a little wider. Sitting tall through the back. And perhaps you could add a gentle forward bend here. And next breath in, we'll come back up, bring the knees back in. So we'll come over onto our backs for a bridge pose. So we'll have the knees hip width apart, neither hip width. And I'm in, trying to bring my buttocks and heels a little closer towards each other. Arms down the side of the body. So I'm just finish off with a, a nice easy rolling bridge for the spine. So moving with the breath as we inhale, lifting the back off the floor. And as we exhale, just rolling it back down. And you can stay with this nice, gentle, simple movement. Or you could also add the arms. So when you breathe in, you'd also extend the arms overhead. And when you exhale, blow the arms back down towards the floor. Just two more rounds. This will be our last one. And then we'll take the knees in towards the chest. Just a nice little squeeze. We'll take both arms out to the sides. Feet and knees together. Let's just roll the legs over to the right. If you like, you can turn the head to look down the left. And then inhale it back to centre. Exhale to the left. And release back to center, feet back to floor. So that concludes all of the asana, the posture work. And today I thought we might go through some of the chakra areas for our relaxation. So if you're not familiar with uh, chakras, chakra means like spinning wheel. And in yoga, we believe that there are seven main energy centers that are based along the spinal column. So I'm going to focus on those energy centers today for our relaxation. They have colors and qualities associated with them. So if you want to get comfortable, perhaps put something warm on. And you can either do this seated or you can be super comfortable and lie on the floor or put your legs up on a chair. It's a blanket over you. So if you do have trouble picturing colour, then maybe think of something that you own that is of that colour to help with this visualisation.
So hopefully by now you've found your comfortable position. And just get a sense of the spine being nice and long, relaxed, either on the floor or in your seated position. And being aware of the connection between yourself and the ground. Being aware of the different sounds around you. Letting those sounds go. And then taking your awareness down towards the base of the spine. So think of where the tip of the spine slightly curls up towards the perineum, the base of the trunk. And at that point, can you picture the color red? Imagine you're breathing into that particular area, breathing into the color red. And this is our base chakra, Muladhara chakra, our center for feeling grounded, safe. So perhaps as you breathe through this red center, think I am confident. I'm full of energy. So breathing in that confidence and energy, feeling grounded and safe. And then moving the awareness a little higher now into the pelvis towards the sacrum. We have the color orange, the sacral chakra, Svadhisthana chakra connects with our water element, creativity. So as you breathe in and out through this center, breathing in the color orange, breathe in thought of constantly having new ideas to create the life you want. Breathe in the vibrancy, energy of the color orange. Now moving the awareness a little higher to the solar plexus around near the navel. We have the color yellow, bright yellow, the Manapura chakra. This is our center for willpower. So as you breathe into this yellow sun of energy, Tell yourself, I am organized. I can accomplish my dreams. I have the willpower.
Now moving your awareness towards the heart center. You have a soft green at the heart. Anahata chakra, our seat for love, compassion, kindness. So as you breathe in this gentle green energy, think I am loved and I am loving. And now moving your awareness to the throat, at the pit of the throat, we have the color blue, beautiful clear blue, the Shuddhi Chakra, center for communication. So as you breathe in this clear blue energy, think I express myself freely. I open the lines of communication. Now moving your awareness to the eyebrow center. We have the color indigo, very deep blue. For Ajna Chakra, our seat of intuition. So as you breathe in that beautiful indigo energy, inhale. I am calm, I can solve my problems. And then moving the awareness now to the crown of the head. At the top of the head, we have the color violet. Sahazara chakra is our center for connection to all other beings. As you breathe in this beautiful indigo violet color, breathe I am at peace. Breathe in the connection to all other living beings on this planet. We are not alone.
Moving that awareness from the crown of the head, the color indigo violet, back to the eyebrow center, deep indigo, feeling calm, at peace. Back down to the color blue at the throat. Feeling able to express yourself clearly. Awareness down to the heart, the color green. Breathing in kindness for yourself. Awareness down to the solar plexus, color yellow. Feeling that you can do whatever you put your mind to. Down to the sacrum, the pelvis, the color orange. Remember in our creativity to have fun, being joyful and doing the little things that make us happy. And then awareness down to the very base of the spine, the color red. Feeling confident, safe and grounded. And expanding your awareness to feel the whole body. Where the body connecting to the ground. Aware of the sounds in your room. Aware of sounds outside the room. Taking a deeper breath into the lungs. And as you draw a deep breath in, begin to move into the hands, into the feet, into the arms and the legs. And just allow yourself to wake and extend in ways that feel good to move. Stretching out, when it feels right, rolling over to the right hand side. And sitting comfortably. So this week's quote from Sadhguru says, life is just a certain amount of time and energy. Putting this time and energy to maximum use for everyone's well-being is all that matters. So it's not just about ourselves, it's about everybody around us supporting. So namaste, have an excellent rest of your week. <laughs>